Hey everyone, Brian Beeler and Kevin O'Brien coming to you from the Storage View Lab. And today we've got something pretty cool and a little bit different. This server you may have seen around before. This is one of the Intel OEM servers uh, that they provided for early Ice Lake testing, but they also sell this to uh, their channel partners and, and customers who customize these things and sell them as solutions. And one of those solutions can be an NVMe over fabric solution to take these high-speed NVMe drives and share them to client systems or application servers uh, over the network. Now, with just eight drives, you might be thinking, well, you know, can you really get that much performance out of these things? But uh, the 5510 is a good little drive. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about a Gen 4 drive that uh, you're gonna be probably four to five gigabytes per second each, depending on the uh, workload. So yeah, in aggregate, Quite a few add up pretty quickly. They're quick. And the benefit when you start thinking about fabrics is that you can take these drives and get them near adjacent to CPU in those client systems. So rather than take four servers, for instance, and put four or five of these drives in each server, we can take one server, four or five of these drives, or in our case, eight total, and share them over the network. Uh, talk networking because that's important too. What are we using for the network? We leveraged the uh, NVIDIA Connect X5 uh, 100 gig adapters and they were uh, direct attached into uh, the host. So we had uh, well, four cables, eight adapters, uh, four in the uh, array, and then one in each of the uh, client systems. Okay, and so there's a lot of ways to do NVMe over fabrics. Brands like NetApp and Dell will have their own for their traditional storage arrays. But if you're rolling your own or doing something like this where you want less blocking stuff in the way to get the most performance, then you've got Linux options, you've got a bunch of other software. What if I want to do Windows, though? There's not really a, a lot or any uh, options there for NVMe or Fabric. Ah, there weren't a lot of options, yes. and there still aren't a lot of options. However, there's one option, and and uh, that's StarWind software. We've worked with StarWind a lot in the past on their Windows systems. They've got a uh, HCI appliance, they've got a uh, security and backup appliance, they've got all sorts of other stuff. But what's really interesting is that they've got a Windows initiator for NVMe over fabrics, and that's really unique in the space. And anyone else that says that they have one is probably licensing the StarWind IP. So what we did is we set out to compare this box hosting the storage using Linux, and then we configured four client servers, uh, what were they, R740s? Yes. R740s. Uh, ran them as Linux first, and then again as Windows Server 19 with the Starwind Initiator to see just in terms of performance what's the difference between Linux and uh, and Windows. And the results are actually pretty cool. Yeah, we got a ton of performance. And uh, while Windows will have more overhead than uh, Linux, it does give you as close to Linux performances you're going to get for NVMe or Fabric. Well, let's get into that. So we've got the, uh, we've talked about the architecture. This is just a, a high level diagram of what we did. You took four drives and, and essentially RAID zeroed them for each CPU. Is that about right? Yeah. And uh, so each host got uh, access into uh, four drives. There's two volumes per a uh, RAID zero group. And basically, it's going to show close to peak performance uh, for this avail uh, for this particular cluster. Okay, so first off, the Linux numbers. So everyone knows Linux. If you're going to do uh, NVMe over Fabrics, Linux will give you the best performance, or at least of these of these two options, um, with the lowest overhead. But then again, the challenge is always with Linux versus Windows. Is well. Windows install base is massive compared to well, Linux. Yeah, and a lot of applications, uh, you, it's not the uh, st it's not the application chasing the storage array, it's the storage array chasing the application. So if you have a Windows application, you need a environment that can support Windows. If it's Linux, I mean, you have some more options there, but it really comes down to what you're running. Right, what are, what are your applications based on? And Windows is the answer for yeah. many of them. All right, so what do we have here that stands out? <laughs> well, I mean, when you're looking at bandwidth, you're talking 21.6 gigabytes per second of random 4K read traffic, or 5.5 million IOPS. Okay, so that's great for Linux, but now the big question is when we go to Windows, I mean, we've already said that we didn't drop that much, but uh, what are we looking at here? 
Yeah, so here uh, we're at around uh, 4 million, oh, 4.1 million IOPS for a 4K random read, or 16 uh, gigabytes per second. And then on the um, uh, large block uh, yeah, you're random You're still getting read, that massive 46 number. Yeah, huh? and that's a number where you're limited more by what the networking fabric is, not the software. Uh, although CPU usage does pick up, and some of that is just more Windows overhead. It's uh, there's not a lot of great options to go around it. It's, but if you're if you need Windows, you need NVMe or Fabric. That's what you're going to get. So pull up the next chart because here we're actually looking at those CPU deltas, and in that far right column, the numbers look a little scary. But anything past the the 4K, the the top one. Um, the change is pretty small. It's like from three to nine percent. So that's probably not in perceived felt realm of, of uh, performance. Here. No, probably not. I mean, most people aren't running that straight line figure. Uh, so it's you're probably not going to have a huge a huge hit. And some of that's driven by the uh, the I/O being generated itself. So if you're at uh, 44 or uh, well, 44 percent some of that is being driven from the FIO uh, IO generator itself mm -hmm. so some of that would be shared by the application running to drive that IO as well okay but overall we're getting really great performance out of Windows NVMe over fabrics using Intel Starwind and Nvidia really simple architecture talk about the uh, the initiator itself it's just like a simple Windows install, right? Yeah, it's a little plugin that you install that gives you uh, connectivity just like you would for uh, iSCSI, for example. Right, and so it shows up in Device Manager as a Starwind initiator dude, and like you're kind of off and running at that point. Yeah, there's really no screenshots to show because it's you're installing a driver. And it's just We have one screenshot in the review. It shows up. Okay, it shows up. But it's easy. Uh, Starwind offers a free version, so if you're running a, uh, a POC or want to check it out, you can uh, hit them, fill out the contact form, presumably get on their list, but they'll give you a free version so you can find out if it works for you or works in your environment. And this is really fun stuff to play with. This is, um, it's not even next generation. I mean, this stuff is here, this is now. Um, nothing complicated to it. You don't need to replace, go get a bunch of DPUs or do anything, you know, new age fancy. Yeah, nothing crazy this right is, now. This so is it's... good to go. And the one thing we should note is even though we were using 100 gig cards on here, we did, uh, did you get saturation on those, or did you run out of ports or anything? Well, when we were running our uh, large block numbers, for example, we were able to uh, max out the 100 gig links. That was your 46 gig number. Yeah, but if you're driving this performance to uh, more than four hosts or something, um, you might only need 100 gig out of this, and then 25 gig or something else to uh, the host or to the clients themselves. So right. you don't need 100 gig fabric to everything. You can leverage. Uh, Kind of smaller fabric. If you you put a hundred gig card in your free NAS box. Yeah, I have them sitting around. <laughs> so sometimes you don't need it; you just want it. And uh, Kevin likes to have hundred gig. Uh, but anyway, really simple. Uh, they make it easy to try. Overall, I don't think the licensing is even that expensive on this thing. But if you're thinking about how to get the most out of drives like these fifty five tens, the Starwind Windows Initiator is really really cool. If that's the world you live in, if Windows is, is your life, then that is a really neat solution and definitely worth checking out. Until next time, thanks for tuning in.